morning, everyone. It's good to see you today. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for the opportunity to be here in, our, in your presence, Lord, with our family, our brothers and sisters in Christ, Lord Jesus. And we just give you glory and praise, and we just ask you, Lord, to anoint this place. Lord, we pray for your protection over this place, Lord Jesus, as we just come before you and worship and, and adore you this morning, Jesus. And I just praise you. Lord, for the victories ahead, Lord Jesus, we walk in your victory daily. Lord, and we trust in you for all things. And we thank you, Jesus, for your glory and your honor as we worship. In your precious name we pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. Rise up and praise him this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. Let the people of God sing His praise all over the land. Everyone in the valley, come and lift your voice. All those on the mountain top, be glad. Shout for joy, rise up and praise Him. He deserves our love. Rise up. Worship the Holy One with all your heart, with all your might, with all your might. Rise up and praise Him. Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. Let the people of God sing His praise all over the land. Everyone in the valley, come and lift your voice. All those on the mountain top be glad. Shout for joy, rise up, rise up and praise Him. He deserves our love. Rise up and praise Him. Worship the Holy One with all your heart. With all your soul, with all your mind, rise up and praise Him. Hear the holy roar of God's resound. Watch the waters part before us now. Tell all the world that His great love of all the world of his great love our God is a God who saves our God is a God who saves let God arise let God arise our God reigns now and forever he reigns God arise, let God arise, our God reigns now and forever, He reigns now and forever, His enemies will run for sure, hallelujah, the church will stand, she will endure, He holds the keys of life, our Lord. Death has no sting, no final word. Our God is a God who saves. Our God is a God who saves. Let God arise. Let God arise. Our God reigns now and forever. He reigns now and forever. 
worship you. Lord, we praise you. Lord, you have the victory. And we worship and praise your holy name. Hallelujah. God, arise in this place. Hallelujah. Oh, praise your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your truth, Lord Jesus, that we stand on in your word. Lord, we walk in your grace daily. and We walk in faith. Lord, and I pray that you would build our faith. Lord, help us to trust in you only, Lord, and not to waver. Oh, Father, we praise you. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are in control. You've got this. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. There is a truth older than the ages. There is a promise of things yet to come. There is one born for us, salvation. Stay. 
praise you. We worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The rocks will not cry out in this place, Lord. We will raise our voices to you in praise and adoration. We will glorify your name. Hallelujah, Jesus. You are holy. You are worthy, Lord. We praise you, Jesus.
says, I have more, I have more, I have more for you to experience. I have more, I have more, I have more for you to enjoy in my presence. says, church, where is your faith? I rose up in victory. I rose up in victory. I need a church that will stand with me and go forth in victory. I have won, says the Lord. Where is your faith? Stand firm on your faith. Go forth in my name. We will be victorious, says the Lord.
for sure. Hallelujah. Do you believe it? The church will stand. She will endure. Yes. He holds the keys of life, our Lord. Death has no sting, no final word. Our God is a God who says, oh, our God is a God who says, Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise his mighty name. Hallelujah. He reigns and rules forever. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Saints of God, let's just raise our hands and voices to the Lord once more. Just give him a praise offering because he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Lord, we give you glory and honor and praise and we magnify your holy name. You are the God who rules and reigns for now and forevermore, Lord God. You're ruling and reigning in the United States of America right now, Lord God. Lord God, you're ruling in this world right this very moment, Lord God. You're ruling in this church, Lord God. You're ruling in our families' lives. You're ruling in our homes, Lord God, because you are the God who rules and reigns forever and ever and ever and ever. And we give you glory and honor and praise this morning, Lord God. You alone are worthy to receive all glory and honor and praise. And Lord, you are the one who walks on the water. You are the one who overtrumps the enemy's plans. You are the one who causes great things to happen out of bad situations, Lord God. You are the one who rules and reigns. And we give you glory and honor and power, Lord God, in this place, in our hearts and in our lives. And Lord God, we thank you for the assurance today that you will overrule the powers of darkness and your kingdom will advance Lord God and the gates of hell will be pushed back in your name and in your power and your authority because you rule and reign Lord God Oh, Lord God, we want to see those waters part in our nation right this very moment, Lord God. Lord Jesus, you see the enemy's plan to tear down and to destroy. But, Lord God, we're trusting you, Lord God, to raise up a standard against the enemy in this nation right now. Lord God, you tell us in your word that we are to pray for those who are in authority over us, whether we agree with them or not. And today, Lord God, we lift up all those who are in authority in this land and this nation, Lord God, and that you would speak to their hearts, Lord God, and a spirit of unity would begin to de develop in the leadership in this this nation and this land. Lord God, we pray right now also for a spirit of unity developed in us and for as a nation as a whole, as, as the average person, Lord God, that we realize that we are not fighting against uh, flesh and blood, but we're fighting against principalities and powers. Lord God, would you bring unity to this land as we seek your face and humble ourselves before your throne room, Lord God, and turn from our wicked ways. Lord God, bring healing to our land. Bring healing to our nation, Lord God. And Lord, together we're standing in agreement that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And Lord Jesus, help us as a church to realize that we're standing now in the greatest moment of time and the greatest need that's ever been around, Lord God. And Lord God, may the church rise up and be the church in this land once again to be that light, to be that salt. Lord God, may they see your love and grace and mercy in us, not the anger, the bitterness, and hatred of the enemy but see your grace, love, and mercy. Lord God, we call those things that are not as though they are and ask that your perfect will be accomplished. Lord Jesus, I also want to pray for those who are in this room right this very moment that may need a touch in their bodies. Lord God, you're still the healer. You're still the great I am. You're still the one who's able to meet every need right now. And Lord Jesus, for those that need a touch in their body right now, may that healing virtue flow to them right where they're sitting, right where they're at this very moment, Lord God. And we claim your word together that by your stripes they have been healed because you sent your word to heal our diseases. 
And Lord God, we also want to pray for our family members and our, our church family members that are home that may be in quarantine right now that aren't feeling well. Lord Jesus, as a body together, collectively, Lord God, we come to agreement and prayer right this very moment, Lord God, that your healing virtue would flow to them right where they're at, right in their homes. Lord God, that the sickness would be gone in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we claim their healing. We believe for their healing. We trust for their healing. And we believe for deliverance to flow right now because we claim the blood of Jesus Christ over their lives, over their situations, and claim your word that they have been healed because you sent that word to heal their diseases right now. By faith, we touch that hem of that garment and may that healing virtue flow in the name of Jesus right this very moment. May it flow in the name of Jesus. And Lord Jesus, I ask you right now also, Lord God, that you would help us walk together with a boldness and a confidence, Lord, that our faith and trust is in you and whom we believe and whom we trust. A faith and a confidence that believes, Lord God, that when the enemy comes in like a flood, you are going to raise a standard against that enemy and there will be victory ahead because we trust in you and we believe in you. Lord Jesus, thank you for your touch. Lord God, I continue to lift up those who are uh, and, uh, serving in the front lines and the hospitals, the doctors, all those who are involved in, 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 in serving in these hospitals, Lord God, that your hedge of protection would be placed around them. Lord God, keep them safe. And Lord, we ask right now also that you would keep this plague from our households. We're going to trust you to do that, Lord God. And Lord Jesus, thank you for victory right now. For victory right now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And all God's people who agreed said, Amen. Victory is ahead, isn't it, saints? Hallelujah. Victory is ahead. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, worship team. God is so good. Amen. I want to welcome everyone to Grace Point Church, where your past does not define your future. How many are grateful for God's grace and mercy? I am so grateful for that fresh start that he has given to me. And I can tell you once, tell you more than once, he's had to give me a second start and a third start. But I thank God for his grace and mercy. His grace is so awesome and so great. So again, we want to welcome everyone to Grace Point Church, where your past does not define your future. Praise the Lord God. How many are so grateful for the Spirit of the Lord? Amen. Amen. His Spirit is so awesome. His Spirit is so powerful. It's so wonderful. And I was praying about what I'm going to preach today. You know, that's a good idea for the pastor to pray about what he's going to preach about. You think that's a good idea? <laughs> You know, I had some people tell me, if you're really spiritual, you just get up there and open your mouth and it just flows out. Well, that may happen once in a while, but most of the time, God's place is in your heart and he has you to work through it and think about it and pray about it and he speaks to you and, and teaches you like that so you can give out, to what, give out to the people what God's given to you. And the first thing he's, when I was praying about what to pray about, this is what he said, trouncing discouragement. And you know what? I'm thinking, God, I'm glad through the power of the Holy Spirit, you know what we need. And I think right now, more than any or ever before, we need to trounce discouragement in our lives. Amen? We need to do that because everything that's going on, if you look at those things and get your eyes off God, it doesn't look good. It can be discouraging. It can be discouraging at home and all those kinds of things. But saints of God, we can trounce discouragement in our lives through God's word, through God's principles. And I believe that can happen in a moment just like that. And we'll follow his principles. And I'm going to go to look, let's look at some of the book of Nehemiah, which I've been there several, several times. But have you ever noticed when God calls you to do something or wants you to do something or to be something or, or to you know, do situations and all of a sudden it doesn't go quite as you planned and it's so easy to get discouraged? How many ever tried to cook a meal and it didn't go as the plan? <laughs> it can be discouraging, right? How many realize you raised your kids and did everything right with your kids and they make a bad decision? That can be discouraging. You know, there's all kinds of things that can be discouraging in our lives, but God does not want us living in discouragement. As a matter of fact, he wants us to trounce discouragement in our lives. Nehemiah 4 and 8. Nehemiah 4 starting in verse 6. So we built the wall, and the wall was joined together unto the half thereof, for the people had a mind to work. But it came to pass that when Sanballat, Tobiah, the Arabians, the Ammonites, and the Hashodites heard that the wall of Jerusalem were up and the breaches began to be stopped, then they were very wroth and conspired all of them together to come and fight against Jerusalem and to hinder it. I can tell you right now, Satan is conspiring 
to fight against the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is conspiring to fight against what's going on in our lives. He is conspiring right now. And I have good news for you today. He does not win. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to start with a little story here. A pastor was preaching his sermon when he noticed his four-year-old son up in the balcony throwing paper wads. Just before dad was going to correct him, the four, the, the, correct the four-year-old boy, he, sh he shout out, Dad, you keep preaching and I'll keep them awake. <laughs> so, I don't have any kids up in the balcony, but boom, no, okay. <laughs> so, here's, here's a fact, saints of God. At some point in our lives, we're all going to face discouragement. Discouragement means this. To deprive of confidence, hope, or spirit. Discouragement deprives us of our confidence, our hope, or our spirit. And times of discouragement are not fun. They're not pleasant to go through. And God has given us a way to trounce discouragement in our lives if we'll follow his principles. So today I want to look at some truths about discouragement. And at the end I'm going to show you some ways that we can trounce it. Amen? And the first truth about discouragement is this. And you're not going to like it. Discouragement is universal. No one is exempt from discouragement. I'm glad I'm getting drowned out by all the amens. As a matter of fact, hear me. I believe this to be true. One of the enemy's greatest tools that he uses against us as Christians and believers is the tool of discouragement. I found this little illustration. It said the devil decided to have a garage sale one day, and his tools were placed for public inspection, each marked at sale price. And there were treacherous lot of implements, hatred, envy, jealousy, a deceit, lust, pride, etc. But set apart from all the other, these other tools was a harmless-looking tool. It looked quite harmless, and, but it was very, very worn. And this tool was very, very expensive. And they asked, what's the name of this tool? And one of the customers wanted to know, and that tool was named discouragement. Satan replied, why do you have it priced so, why do you have it priced so high, the customer asked. Well, Satan said, because it's more useful to me than the others. I can pry open and get inside a heart of a man with that, even when I can't get near him with my other tools. It is so badly worn because I use it on almost everyone since so few people recognize that it belongs to me. Why does God, why does Satan use the tool of discouragement? Get this in your notes. Discouragement always brings separation. Discouragement always brings separation. Discouragement can separate you from your relationships. It can separate you from your relationships with your family, your spouse, your friends, your relationship with God. You see, saints of God, you feel when you feel like you're separated from God because of discouragement, you feel like God's not there, God's not caring, God doesn't love me. Can I tell you, that's a lie from the pits of hell. Discouragement can separate you from your church family. Discouragement can separate you from, your, from God himself. Discouragement can cause you to become a very critical think, a critical thinking person about God and what God's doing and what God's not doing. Discouragement can separate you from your God-given mission and God-given purpose for your life. How many believe that you got a God-given mission and a God-given purpose? Every one of us in this room, God has chosen you. He has called you for a mission and for a purpose. And if you allow dis 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 discouragement to get a hold of you, that discouragement can separate you from that purpose that God has for your life. And that's exactly what's going on in America today. Because there's so many people discouraged, so many pe people discouraged in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ that we're giving up on the mission that God has for us and we're separating ourselves from the mission, crawling into a hole to try to protect ourselves when God's saying, don't separate yourself because cause of discouragement. Get out of the discouragement and get forth what I called you to do. Amen? Hallelujah. God is so good, isn't he, saints? So you see why, God, why the enemy uses discouragement. It's one of his most nasty tools that he has. Because I can tell you, most people, most people, most Christians aren't going to fall to some big, bad, and ugly thing because we recognize it. What we're going to fall to is those little subtle tactics of like discouragement that separates us from what God has for us and what God's best for us. And hear me, saints, 
This is not a critic being critical or putting down. No one is immune from these seasons of discouragement. Can I get an amen there? I don't care how rich you are. I don't care how poor you are. I don't care what your place in life is. We all can go through these things, which leads me to the, the second point we have to get in our notes is this. There is a difference between facing discouragement and discouragement having you. There is a difference from facing discouragement and discouragement having you. While we may get discouraged from time to time, we must never allow discouragement to get a hold of us. Can I get an amen there? Because once we allow discouragement to get a hold of us, that discouragement then begins to control our lives. And hear me, that discouragement will determine your future as long as you hold on to it. That's a very dangerous place to be. But here's some good news right here. During the discouraging times, through the power of the Holy Spirit, we can allow the Holy Spirit to control our lives even when we're facing discouragement and not allow the discouragement to get a hold of us. I am so glad for the power of the Holy Spirit today. I am so glad that he did not leave us as orphans and abandoned us. I am so glad that he is a friend that sits closer than a brother. I am so glad that he can empower us to have victory over every situation. I am so glad that he empowers us to give us the authority to tread upon the serpents and the scorpions. I am so glad, grateful for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Praise God for the power of the Holy Spirit in the Christian's life. And when I'm facing that discouragement, I need to face it in the power and the authority of Jesus and not allow that discouragement to get a hold of me. Amen? Hallelujah. You see, saints of God, when the Holy Spirit gets a hold of me, when I'm facing discouragement, that means I can still function. I can still continue on with the mission. I can still continue on with God's purpose in my life. And saints of God, you say, well, pastor, you never went through a hard time. You don't know what, I'm talk you don't know what you're talking about. I want to tell you, saints of God, I've been through some discouraging times in my life. Anyone else been there? And I can tell you some of those discouraging times is being pastor here, not because of you, but something that's gone on in my life that had nothing to do with the church. And I wonder from time to time, how am I going to put my next foot in front of the, my foot in front of the next foot? How am I going to get through this? I'll tell you how I got through it. I didn't look at the discouragement. I looked to the power of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit gave me the strength to get up here and to preach and to teach. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit gave me the power to continue. Even though I'm facing discouragement, that discouragement did not have me. Hallelujah. And saints of God, that's exactly where God wants each and every one of us right now. Yes, it's a discouraging time in America. Yes, it's a discouraging time. But that discouragement does not have to bind us. It does not have to bind us up. We can face it through the power of the Holy Spirit and have victory on the other side. Glory to his name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We can still have confidence in our God. And when I'm facing discouragement and the power of the Holy Spirit, I walk in the peace of God. I walk in the joy of the Lord, even in discouraging times. Glory to his name. Circumstances are not always good. Circumstances can shake our world. But hear me, circumstances can never shake our God. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. A ship wrecked in a furious storm, and the only survivor was a little boy who was swept by the waves into a, a, onto a rock. He sat there all night long, holding on with everything he had until the next morning when he was spotted and he was rescued. Someone asked the boy later, did you tremble while you were on the rock during that night? Yes, said the boy, but the rock did not tremble. I'm going to tell you, saints of God, we may be trembling out here. The world may be trembling, but our God is not trembling. Hallelujah. When you allow discouragement to take control of your life, you will stop doing what God has asked you to do, and you begin to lose your hope. You begin to lose your confidence. You begin to lose your peace. You begin to lose your joy. You know why? Because our eyes are focused on the discouraging situation instead of focusing on the God who's able to overcome those things. I saw a little meme, and I, I wish I'd have brought it and put it up there, but it says, when you pray, focus on God, not the problem. There's a lot of problems out there, but we're not going to focus on the problems. We're going to focus on our God because our God can take care of the problems. I can't do it. Oh, if I could do it, I guarantee you things would be changed in a heartbeat. But I can't do it. But my God can. Amen? Never allow discouragement to get a hold of you. Yes, we face it. But we face it in the power of the Holy Spirit. And we see that discouragement come down 
in the name and the authority of Jesus. You say amen? The next thing I want to look at here is this about discouragement. Discouragement can be contagious. Discouragement can be contagious. Aren't we familiar with contagious things lately? But hear me, very, very important. Don't take on someone else's discouragement. May I get an amen? This, is, this seems to be human nature. When we are discouraged, we want other people to be discouraged with us. We want other people in the same boat that we are in. We want them to feel what we're suffering. We want them to suffer the same way we are suffering. Aren't we wonderful people? And it's so easy if you listen to someone who is constantly discouraged, negative, critical, constantly talking about it, constantly putting other people down, constantly criticizing this and criticizing that, and if you listen to that long enough, you know what's going to happen? You're going to get it all over you. Because as a man heareth, he becomes. As a man thinketh, he becomes. And it is so easy to take on that discouragement. And saints of God, I'm saying this right now because I need to hear it too. There's a lot of things, again, to look out there you could be discouraged about. But saints of God, if I'm discouraged, I'm saying I don't trust my God. I'm saying I don't have faith. I am saying right now, yes, it is out there. Yes, it is real. But I am not taking that on in my life personally because I want to walk in faith and victory. I want to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. I want to walk in the power of the Word of God. And saints of God, I am going to do that through the power of the Holy Spirit. And I cannot and will not take on someone else's discouragement. Amen? Now, does that mean that we have to isolate those who are discouraged? I'm not saying that at all. You know, a cynic says it this way, don't bother telling people your problems. Half of them don't care. And the other half figured you had it coming. <laughs> Romans 12 and 15 says this, rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Now, how does that apply we don't insulate ourselves and push away those who are discouraged, okay? What we do then is this. We begin to we protect ourselves, we insulate ourselves, but then we begin to pray for those who are discouraged. We begin to encourage those who are discouraged. We don't take it on. We don't become them, and we try to influence them and love them and care for them and lift them up. Can I get an amen there? We rejoice when they're rejoicing, but we also weep when they're weeping. We just don't take on the discouragement. And saints, I say that because there are a lot of fellow brothers and sisters in Christ that are discouraged right now. And we need to be there. We need to encourage them. We need to lift them up. But we don't take on the discouragement. We stay strong in the power of the Holy Spirit. Next truth about discouragement is this. Discouragement is curable. I have a vaccine for discouragement that will work. That's been time tested and approved for many, many, many years. Amen? The, hear me, though. Discouragement is universal, but it is curable if you want to be cured. Well, wouldn't a person want to be cured from discouragement? Well, you would think so. But let's be honest there, when you're discouraged, what's the last thing you want? Is someone telling you how to get feeling better? Isn't that true? Yeah, for whatever reason, and when we're down in that pit, we're down in that discouragement, we're thinking, I'm going to stay here and I shall, I shall not be moved. And then you get offended when someone says, oh, you shouldn't be down in here, you need to get up, you need to do this. Here's a simple fact. You want to be set free from discouragement? You got to want it. Because when you're discouraged, you don't feel like doing anything. You don't want to do anything except maybe go to bed or pig out. I'm not going to ask for a show of hands on that one. <laughs> but we got to want it. Amen? You see, saints of God, if we're going to cure discouragement in our life, we have got to say, Jesus, I am sold out 100% to your principles. And hear me, 
I am not going to live by what I feel, but I'm going to live by your truth. And your truth declares, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And the truth of the word of God is very, very clear. Who the Son has set free is free indeed. And here's the problem. You've got to tell yourself that. You've got to believe that. And you've got to stop listening to your emotions. You've got to stop listening to your feelings. The Bible says, didn't say, you shall know your feelings and your feelings will set you free. You shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. And hear me. This takes some spiritual discipline on our part because it's so easy to go by how we feel and what our emotions are saying instead of denying ourselves, denying our emotions, and denying our feelings and begin to walk in the truth of the Word of God. And here's what happens. When you begin to deny those feelings in your life, you begin not to live by those, and you begin to live by God's truth, eventually that truth takes over and you begin to live in the truth instead of the discouragement and despair. Isn't God good, saints God? He's good, isn't he? Hallelujah. You see, discouragement is losing the desire, the motivation to continue something that brings purpose and satisfaction to one's life. And that's why Satan uses this tool so, so much. We can trounce it, amen? Hallelujah. Now here, I I don't know if I have these up there or not, but here's what you need to do at this point in time when you're feeling discouraged. Number one, return to your first love with all your heart. I don't know if I have it up there or not, but if it's not, you get that in your notes. Return to your first love with all your heart. Let's be honest here. How many remember when you were first saved? Wasn't it glorious? I mean, that excitement, that thrill, that joy. I mean, you were on fire. You probably were zealous. You're probably a radical. You probably did things that were very stupid to older Christians. But now you become one of the older Christians. And what we need to do? We need to return to that first love. Amen. The second thing you need to do here is this. You need to saturate yourself in the word of God. I mean saturate yourself in the word of God and claim the promises of the word. When I'm talking about saturating, I mean you need to find that time where you get alone with God. You begin to read the word. And saints of God, I love the Bible reading programs. We'll have those back out again. But you know what? Something more important than just reading through the whole Bible It's taking a portion of the Bible and understanding, Holy Spirit, what are you saying to me? What are you speaking to me about in this portion of Scripture? It's good to read through the whole Bible in a year, and I encourage you to do that. But also take a time where you just sit in just a small portion. Speak to me. What does this say to me? God, what you have me do here? How does this apply to my life? I like to call it dissecting the Word of God. And here's what I have found myself personally. When I do it that way, all kinds of things come from the Holy Spirit. I begin to see truths I've never seen before. I begin to see power I've never had before. I begin to see God put the Bible together where it all makes sense. I begin to see God's plan because I'm understanding what the Word of God says through the power of the Holy Spirit because I am going to saturate myself in the Word. Take time to read your Bible in the morning, in the evening, in the afternoon. Come to church on a regular basis. Amen. Go to Bible studies. Go to the Sunday school teaching. Get, uh, even, there's nothing wrong with listening to it on the radio or, or, you know, there's all kinds of Bible apps. But begin to saturate yourself with the Word of God because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. The Word of God is active. It's alive. It's a powerful thing. Hallelujah. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld the glory of the only begotten of the Father. The Word of God is active, powerful, and alive. And you're facing discouragement. Saturate yourself in the Word of God. Say amen. 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 And then this next one is important here. Stop allowing your heart to lead you and learn to lead your heart. You see, I hear this all the time. Well, I feel this way. My heart says this. My heart says that. The Bible says about your heart, it is desperately wicked. Boy, doesn't that make you feel good. And because the heart is desperately wicked, then we say, well, I'm going to allow my heart to lead me. That is one of the foolish things you can do when it comes to the things of God. Because if you allow your heart to lead you, we end up the messes that we have all around us. Because our heart is desperately wicked. So what I have to do then, I have to learn to allow 
through the power of the Holy Spirit to lead my heart, not allow my heart to determine what's true and right and what I should do, but what the Holy Spirit would have me do. I've got to learn to lead my heart. And the number one way to do that, you begin to pray. You begin to pray with your whole heart and say, God, what are you speaking to me? What are you saying to me? What would you have me do? And when you pray that prayer, you need to be still for a little bit and allow him to speak. Amen? And then you go back to the word. And one other thing I want to add here on this one is this. Talk to a trusted, mature, spiritual friend. Amen. Hear me. It's very, very important that you, and myself included, find wise spiritual counselors that will tell you the truth, not what you want to hear. You know, there was a story in the Old, in the Old Testament of, about this young, young whippersnapper king. He had a group of his counselors who were his age, his peers, and they told him to do one thing, but he had an older set of uh, his father's peers, counselors were older, and they told him to do something else. And what did the young whippersnapper do? He listened to the young, immature counselors, and it caught brought disaster and if he simply would have listened to the mature counselors who had life experience who had their walk proven with God things could have been a whole lot different and let's be honest most of the time people don't want counseling they want someone to agree with them that they are right and the other person is wrong but saints of God we need counselors spiritual counselors that will tell us the truth in love even if it doesn't go with what we want to hear or believe. Amen? Number three in the outline for taking notes. The causes of discouragement. Number one cause is this, a loss of strength or fatigue. Whew. How many have ever been tired? Nehemiah 4 and 10, and, and Judah said, the strength of the bearers of the burden is decay, and there's much rubbish so we're not able to build the wall. What are they looking at? They're looking at all the decay, the brokenness. They're looking at all those things that are around them. And here's what happens, saints of God, if we're not careful, if we keep our eyes on the rubbish, is that it begins to wear us down physically, emotionally, and spiritually. We become tired physically. How many of you have been tired physically? And when you're tired physically, nothing goes right, nothing is right, you're a grouch, amen, amen, you're just plain worn out. And here we find that God's people have been working hard, hard, hard for a long, expended time, and now they're physically, emotionally, and spiritually simply tired, weary, and worn out. They're exhausted. Anyone ever been there? Amen? And that's not a criticism. I mean, that's just simply what happens. But you know why we get physically, emotionally, and spiritually wore out? You ready for this? Because we're not following God's principles of rest, of enjoyment. The last time I checked, there was a Sabbath rest. And I'm not arguing what day the Sabbath is, okay? But there comes a point in time where, believe it or not, physically, you need to simply sit back and relax and enjoy instead of push, 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 push. Everyone's looking at me like, shut up. Someone said for every action, there is an equal, op 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 there's an equal and opposite criticism. What I'm saying there is that sometimes when we're serving God that we can have critical people criticize us for serving. And when they criticize us for serving, I always like to ask, how are they doing it? Well, we're not doing it. Well, I like my way of doing it better than your way of not doing it. And if we take that criticism on, that even expands that discouragement in our lives. Saints of God, what's so important here is this. When we're exhausted, don't allow critical people to jump all over you if you need to take, you ready for this? A break. God's good, isn't he? The second cause for discouragement is this, is loss of enthusiasm. 
loss of enthusiasm. The loss of enthusiasm usually comes about the halfway point, whatever God's asked you to do. Nehemiah 4 and 6, so they built a wall, and the wall was joined together unto the half thereof, for the people had a mind to work. And what happens is when you first start out with God, you first start out with the mission that God has for you, you're all enthousi- you have all this enthusiasm. You're enthusiastic about it. You can't wait to get going. You can't wait to see what God's going to do through you. And you work, you work, you work, you work, and you get about halfway through it, and then you're going, how many have ever bought a new car? When did the enthusiasm for that new car stop? about halfway through the payment process. When does the new smell of that car go away? About halfway through before it's paid off. And it's so easy to start out with God and and be all enthusiastic about it, about halfway through, then you go, oh, I'm tired. Anyone know what I'm talking about? It wears off. And there's where, saints of God, you have to begin to rise up and say, God has called me to do this. This is the purpose God has chosen me for. And even though I may not feel like it right this very moment, I'm still going to go on with God because he who endures to the end shall be saved. The one who crosses the finish line is the winner, not the one who quits halfway through. And, 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 you know, saints of God, when we lose our enthusiasm for the things of God. So how do I keep my enthusiasm for the things of God? Well, part of it is what you're doing right now. You come to the house of God and you worship him, okay? That's, and you come together for a meeting like this. Thank God the Word of God says, gathering together in the last days, forsake not. So one of the things I think is discouraging in our nation and many churches today is that we're not allowed to, in some places, thank God we can do it, in some places you're not allowed to gather together, you're not allowed to sing praises together, you're not allowed to do anything together in the church, but you can go to the strip club. We need one another. We need to worship together. We need to praise together. And I'm not saying being stupid, you know. I mean, if, if you're coughing up a lung, please stay home. You know, I'm not saying be stupid. And, and, and if you have a hard time shaking someone's hand, just give them the I love you sign. Okay, that's I love you sign. You know, that's I love you. You know, if, if you have those issues, that's okay. We're not picking. If you feel you need to wear a mask, wear a mask. But we need not to forsake the assembling ourselves together in the last days, even as we realize the day of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is approaching. We need one another. We keep each other going. We encourage each other. Saints of God, if you want to keep the enthusiasm together, I can tell you right now, fellowship one with another. Glory to his name. Amen? Have you ever wondered why um, a lot of the home projects only get never accomplished all the way? I'll tell you why. Because of this. You're enthusiastic to get it done until about halfway, and then it gets left, and someone else has to do it. The next one is this, saints of God, a loss of vision. A loss of vision. And what I'm saying simply here is this, saints of God, discouragement is trying to separate you from the vision that God has given to you and God has given to the church. That's what discouragement is trying to do, separate you from the vision. Because without a vision, what happens? The people perish. Amen? God-given vision, what leads us into our present spiritual inheritance. Satan doesn't want you living in your, your spiritual inheritance now. Satan doesn't want you walking in the power and the authority of the Word of God. So he brings this discouragement to separate you from the vision that God has placed upon your life. Okay, you know what, saints of God? I say, God, pour out your vision on us a great and mighty way. You say amen? A, a couple had been married for 50 years when the wife said to her husband, things have really changed. You used to sit so close to me. Well, I can remedy that, the husband said, and moved right next to her on the couch. She said, you used to hold me so tight. Well, he said, I'll just give you a great big hug. And he did. And, he said, do you, and she said, do you remember how you used to nibble on my earlobes? Well, with that, the husband jumped up and left the room. And the wife yelled, where are you going? He says, I'll be right back. i got to get my teeth. What I'm saying is this, return to the vision. Just don't dream about what the revision used to be or what it was, but return to 
the vision that God's given you. Amen? Praise God. God is good, isn't he? The next one is this, saints of God, an attack by the enemy to bring frustration to stop you. Nehemiah, 7, uh, Nehemiah 4, 7 through 8, it says this, And when it came to pass that Sanballat, Tobiah, and the Arabians, and the Ammonites, and the Ashdodites heard that the walls of Jerusalem were made up, and that the breaches began to be stopped, then they were wroth, but verse 8, and conspired all them together to come to fight against Jerusalem and to hinder it. Again, they conspired to fight. Ezra 4, 4 through, Ezra 4, 4 through 5, talking about the same situation. And then the people of the land weakened the hands of the people of Judah and troubled them in building and hired counselors against them to frustrate their purpose. Saints of God, that word frustrate means to break, to annul, to do away with, to fail, uh, to ineffective, to make void, to split, to divide. And remember, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And realize when those things come against you, that's the thief doing that. Because too many people are saying, God did this, God allowed this, God didn't do that, God, did not, God, not, God has nothing to do with that. Anything that comes to steal, kill, and destroy comes from the hand of Satan, does not come from our God. And we got to hold on to that. Amen? That's why the enemy wants you to be discouraged so he can frustrate the work that God has for you. He can frustrate the work for the kingdom of God. And saints of God, he is not going to have victory. The next point is this, and I'm going to hit it here real quick. The cure for discouragement. And I already kind of mentioned this right now, but I'm going to hit it again here. Rest and relaxation for your body and your mind. I'm going to hit it again. Rest for your body and your mind. A friend of a young mother with three young children were surprised when they received the following thank you note. Many, th many thanks for the playpen. It's being used every day from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. I get in it to read, and the children can't get near me. <laughs> the best thing that we can do for our mind and body is to get apart and rest. Mark 6, 30 through 31 says this, and this is biblical. And the apostles gathered themselves together unto Jesus and told him all the things, both they had done and what they had taught. And he said unto them, ready for this? Come ye yourself apart into the desert place. And what's that? And rest a while. For there are many coming and going, and they had no leisure so much as to eat. Again, we need some rest. We need some leisure. And for some of you, that rest and leisure may be sleeping into 8 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> it may be. Hey, the other day I slept to 8 o'clock in the morning. It's like, whoa, hallelujah. <laughs> some of you, that rest and leisure may be grabbing a good book and sitting down and reading a story. Some of you, that rest and leisure may be going shopping. Just make sure you give your husband the credit card before you go because <laughs> he needs the rest and relaxation too. <laughs> That rest and leisure, whatever it is that brings peace, it may be going to the garden when the garden time's coming and pulling the weeds. It may be go sitting at the lake somewhere. It may be fishing somewhere. It may be uh, knitting and quilting. Whatever brings you leisure and peace, take some time to do that. Amen? And here's one I'm going to throw in here. The Bible says, you know, exercise is actually good for you. To exercise profiteth a little. That's what the Bible says. And I don't want to look in the mirror right now. One of the things I have discovered when I'm feeling really discouraged and down to help is to get up and go to the gym. Get on the treadmill. Do some weight lifting. Do some type of activity. Maybe walk back and forth for a while because there's something that happens when you begin to exercise these muscles. It clears your mind. You begin to feel better. And I think there's no better feeling in the world after you've done weightlifting than that soreness. It's just, to me, it's awesome. But I guarantee you, you don't feel like doing it. But if you get out and do it, you'll find it will help. As a matter of fact, even medical science says exercise is good for you. Amen? Amen. Now, when I'm saying that, I'm not saying you take off 365 days a year. Amen. The next one is this here. Reorganize your life.
4, uh, da Daniel 4, or Daniel, Nehemiah 4 and 13. Therefore said I the lower palace behind the walls on the high place. I set people after their families with their swords, their spears, and their bows. The work had come to a halt. So the work wasn't, the work they were doing was correct. It was God's work. But it had come to a halt. So what did they do? They reorganized. They did it in a new way. They came up with a plan. Each person doing their own portion of their wall. You plan on human things there. But they reorganized. It wasn't they were doing the wrong thing. They were maybe doing the right thing in the wrong way. Okay? So they reorganized. And there comes times in our lives where we need to reorganize our lives. There may be some things that we need to get rid of. Maybe some things we need to add. Maybe some things we need to change priority on. But we need to reorganize our lives so we can do what God's called us to do. And the next one is this, saints. Remember the Lord. Nehemiah 4 and 13. I like this. Be not afraid of them. Remember the Lord, which he is great and terrible. That idea of terrible is great and mighty. Okay? Remember. But the first part he said, don't be afraid of them. What were the enemy trying to do? They were threatened to kill them, to destroy the work they were doing. They were threatened, threatening and threatening and threatening them. What does Satan constantly do to us? There's a lot of things to be afraid of in the natural in America right now. But don't be afraid of that. I, whether you like it or not, whether whoever the president is, the president of the United States is not our source. He's not. The Lord Jesus Christ is our source. We only have one Savior, and his name is Jesus. No matter who is in office, no matter what's going on, Jesus is still the source of the Christian. Amen? He's the one who owns the cattle and a thousand hills and all the taters under those hills. He's the one who knows how to provide all our needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus our Lord. He says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. God says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. He is the, we are the, not the tail, but we are the head because of him. Hallelujah. Saints of God, he is the source of the Christians, and we don't have to be fearful of what's going on. And the moment you become fearful, I guarantee you're going to become discouraged. We don't have to be. So hear what I'm saying here. Stop looking at the rubbish and start looking to your God. Amen. Be careful not to forget your God. Glory to his name. How do you remember God? I want these in your notes. You remember God this way. Remember God's goodness to you in the past. Has God ever been good to you? Can I get a wave offering? God's been good to you. Begin to remember those things. And you know what happens when you're discouraged? You forget those things. You dwell on the rubbish. You dwell on the negative. You think on those things. And whatever you think on, you begin to magnify in your mind. Begin to dwell on what God has done for you in the past. You know what's a good thing to do? Get out a piece of paper and start to make a list. When God blessed you, how God blessed you, how God provided, how he met this need, how he met that need. And you know why that's so important? It builds faith in your life. They overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. You begin to remember what God has done. And here's what's important. If God has done it in the past, he's the same God of the past as he is today hallelujah and god can do it today also my god shall meet all my needs it's like that old hymn said count your many blessings name them one by one and it will surprise you what the lord has done and some of us need to get out and remember what god's already done for us in the past amen i'm not going to live in it but i'm going to remember it because what he's done in the past he can do for me in the future he can do it for me now Amen. Glory to his name. The next thing is this. Remember God's presence is with you. Remember that. Jesus says, lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the age. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll never abandon you. I will send them. But Jesus, I'll send the comforter to you. The Holy Spirit dwells within us. You are now the temple of the Holy Spirit. The same spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead now dwells in your mortal bodies. Hallelujah remember the presence of the Lord is with you at all times. And the presence of the Lord isn't based on your feelings. I like it when I feel and sense the presence of the Lord. But saints of God, he's even with us when I don't feel or sense his presence. Remember he is with you. You say amen to that? So then what that means? You're never alone. Hallelujah. He's a friend that sits closer than the brother. Hallelujah. The next thing to remember is this. Remember his promise for the future. 
Isaiah 40 and 31 says this, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Remember the promises of God. One of the things I think that we need to as a group of uh, people, as Christians, period, is begin to get back to believing God's word and not the circumstances around us. <laughs> you know what? He says, I will renew their strength. But, but, but what, what, that's the important part there. But do, do, do what? Wait upon the Lord. You know what that word wait there means? Like a server serving tables. I wait on him. I get into his presence, okay? And as I wait upon him, guess what happens? He renews my strength. And he mount up with wings as eagle. Where's the eagle flying? Above all the circumstances. And then it says, she shall run and not be weary. And then not faint. Get your minds off of the discouragement and get your minds on the Lord Jesus Christ. The next thing we have to do is this. We have to resist. We have to resist discouragement. Nehemiah 4.13, Be not afraid of them. Remember the Lord which is great and terrible. And look at this. And fight for your brethren, your sons, and your daughters, your wives, and your house, houses. And what he's simply saying is this. We're not an island to ourselves we have to fight one for another. We have to fight for each other. We have to fight for ourselves. We have to fight this discouragement. Saints of God, I want to tell you right now, I am so blessed to be part of this church family. Because yes, there's been difficulties. Yes, there's been hard things this, this last, last year. Thank God we're another year. But we you know what? As a church, we've been fighting together. We started a whole ministry, a, a media ministry. We've been fighting together. And I remember when we started that media ministry, we knew nothing. And God took a group of people who knew nothing, and we got it started. Changes have taken place even during this period of time of discouragement because we're fighting together. And I believe, saints of God, as a body of believers, that we're going to fight together to see this church go forth triumphant in Jesus' name. Amen? Hallelujah. And we're not the only ones doing that. I believe there's other churches doing the same thing. You say amen? The next one is this, and I'll be closing with this. And everyone who agreed said, ready for this? Return to work. Verse 15, And it came to pass when our enemies heard that it was known unto us that God had brought their counsel to naught, that we returned all of us to the wall, everyone unto his work. In other words, saints of God, <laughs> we had our relaxation there when we needed it, but we don't continue to have relaxation 365 days a year. We return to the purpose where God has called us. We return to the work that God has given to us, and we begin to serve. I guarantee you one of the greatest ways to get rid of discouragement in your life is to begin to serve someone else. Begin to involve in ministry. Return to the ministry that God has called you to. Return to the work that God has placed upon your life. Return to what God has called you to do, and it will bring joy and peace and happiness to your life once again. But you've got to return to the work, and that means we can't be couch potatoes in the church pews got to get busy about what God's called us to do and you know what this whole church here right now needs everybody how many remember the old bicycle wheels and the spokes okay you got that hub right there is the church okay but what keeps that wheel going is all the spokes if you remove one of those spokes what happens to the rim it begins to do this, it begins to get wobbly, it begins to fall apart. And saints of God, every one of us is a spoke that is necessary in the kingdom of God for the kingdom of God to, to advance. So you may be feeling discouraged today, resist it, and return to work in Jesus' name. Because Romans 11 and 29 says this, the gifts and calling are God are without repentance. God's called you, he hasn't changed his mind. Now, you may have you do it a different way, at, at, you know, do it in a different, different situation, but return to work in Jesus' name. Amen? God is good, isn't he? Hallelujah. Thank God. Father God, I want to thank you and praise you for today and for your great love and your mercy to us. And Lord, I thank you so much for your faithfulness. And Lord Jesus, I thank you today knowing that we can trounce 
discouragement in our lives. We can see what's going on within the natural realm, but realizing that you're still ruling and reigning. With every head bowed and every eye closed and no one looking around, maybe you're here today and you say, Pastor, I have been going through the discouragement, but today I'm making a choice before God that I'm going to resist this discouragement and I'm going to continue on what God has for me. I'm believing and trusting for complete deliverance, complete freedom, and complete victory. If that's you right now, I just want you to raise your head up and look at me just for a second. I'm believing for complete, complete victory over this discouragement. Yes, God bless each and every one of you right now. Every one of you right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, I just lift up to those who are struggling with the discouragement today. And Lord Jesus, that, that right now you would just fill them with that strength, with your peace and your joy. And there will be victory in their situations. Lord God, I also want to give an invitation to those who don't know you as Lord and Savior. That today may be the day that they come to find you and the forgiveness of their sins. With every head bowed and no one looking around and those who are listening online today. If you've never come to the place in your life where you say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins, come to my heart and life and be my Lord and Savior, I want to give you that opportunity right now. If you need Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want you to repeat this prayer with me. Dear Lord, I ask you now to be my Lord and my Savior. Forgive me of everything I've done wrong. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And from this moment on, Lord, I receive your grace, your mercy, and your forgiveness. Thank you for saving me, and thank you for setting me free. In your name we pray. And all God's people who agreed said, amen. God bless you in Jesus' name.